So I'm a prepper, you know I believe in conspiracy theories. My favorite one, the one I refuse to, to, to give up, the one that I'm the most invested in. Are you ready for this? It's a little silly. It is not the planet Nibiru, by the way. Uh, Amelia Earhart, I know, crazy. Amelia Earhart, you know, supposedly the, the famous American aviatrix who was trying to, to fly around the globe with a, with a male navigator, uh, disappeared out in the, in the Pacific Ocean somewhere, supposedly died. Great, great hero of the feminists, you know, this great female innovator. Uh, there's been a conspiracy theory going around for years that she did not die in that crash. Uh, and there's been a lot of talk about this in recent years, but but uh, the, 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 the version of this that makes the most sense to me, uh, the, the mainstream theory is that she crash landed on an island and, and her and, and the navigator, whose name I can't remember, died a few weeks later. Uh, there is a version that says she was captured by the Japanese and uh, died in a Japanese prison. There's another version that I, I tend to believe a little bit more, mostly just because it ties some loose bows up for me, that she actually defected to the Japanese, uh, and that she was actually Tokyo Rose during the war. Uh, after the war, she was repatriated into America and, uh, and lived out the rest of her life in New Jersey, where she, she got married and, and lived a very quiet life. And uh, you can find this stuff on the internet, and they, they even know the woman who they think she was and everything. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because today I saw on the Drudge Report, and a lot of y'all probably saw it too, is that they found this photograph that appears to be Amelia Earhart and her navigator on a Japanese cargo ship with her plane in the background several weeks after she supposedly died in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, really interesting. It's, it's going to be on the History Channel. Obviously, they're not taking the next step with the Tokyo Rose connection. Uh, there's some interesting things. She had a, a proclivity for Japan. Uh, she even helped uh, with the development of the Zero Fighter at one point, flew it and gave him some notes on its performance and everything. Uh, so, th so this whole thing isn't just made out of whole cloth, there is some, some stuff behind it. At the same time, I, I probably should have done a different intro to this, in, in that same, on, on that same front page of Drudge Report there was another story about women and it came out of the, the UK Telegraph. I didn't get the chance to read the whole story so I, I'm pretty sure it was talking about women in the UK. Uh, but it, it, it may have been women in the West General, I'm not sure on that. The story was about these women unable to find eligible men to marry and, and have children with, and so they're, they're having to freeze their eggs, or that's they're turning to freezing their eggs in the hope to preserving their fertility longer until they find a mate to hopefully have a chance to, to experience motherhood and, and have children. Uh, and, and these two stories kind of you know, go hand in hand you know, Amelia Earhart is this hero to feminism, supposedly. She's this great shining example of, of what women can accomplish when, when they, they throw off the patriarchy. Even though she didn't accomplish anything and she was doing it with the help of a man, but, you know, wh whatever. It seems to be more of an example of patriarchy working if their version of events were, were, were true. But, and then you got this story with the frozen eggs where, where women are who are living this feminist dream, at least as, as close as they've ever gotten in the history of, of the world, in the West, where, you know, it's never been closer to the feminist ideal than it is in America and certainly the UK and, and these other places. And, and they're unhappy and they're not able to accomplish their goals and they're having to turn to uh, medical intervention to, to have a hope of achieving their goals. Uh, you know, there's a storyline, and this is why we'll, we'll never hear the truth of the Amelia Earhart thing. There, there is this veneer, this uh, illusion they have to keep up of, of, uh, of empowered women living fulfilled, successful, happy lives that is not being torn out in the, in the culture at large, you know. They've got to have their Amelia Earharts flying around the world. They can't have her, her being Tokyo Rose during the war. Uh, and coming back to live a quiet life in New Jersey. Uh, they, they've got to have her being a, uh, a hero. At, at the same time, they've got to have these women, it, it's so important to them that they go to work, that, that they be in the labor force, that they, they not be mothers and wives. Uh, and, and then they're, they're, they're coming up with these women who aren't fulfilled, who aren't achieving their goals in their life, and are, are finding something lacking 
a husband and a child, go figure, uh, and, and they're trying to come up with these other strategies to accomplish it. If I could, if I could talk to a young woman, uh, maybe even my own daughters, you know, I, I have daughters who don't agree with our ideologies and, how, and the way we live here on the, on the homestead. You know, I would say, you can always get a job. You know, motherhood, motherhood is, is usually over by 45. You know, you've got another 20 years to, to retirement at that point. Uh, you can always go get a job. You can't. You can't always have children. You can't always find a, a, a man who is interested. Not because you're not interesting, but because men die quicker and sooner and fall out of, and fall out of the marriage game a lot, a, a lot more rapidly than women. There's always more women who want pair bonding. I won't use the term marriage because it's become loaded. There's always more women who want pair bonding with men than there are men who want pair bonding with women. Uh, for a whole host of reasons. Uh, so, look women, don't don't go sailing off into the wild blue yonder when, you, when you're young and firm and good looking and, uh, and then expect to survive the plane crash and live through the war, uh, sell out your country, come back in, in late middle age and, and there's gonna be some man sitting there waiting to, to, uh, to be a part of your life. This, those young years, those, those early years, when, when you are firm and young and good looking, and that's an investment you need to make in your future. Uh, you know, those are the years you need to invest in a, in a, in a young man uh, so that when the later years come, he has this history with you and he has this value built up in you and, uh, and you guys can, can finish out a life together. And you know what? You're never, ever, ever, never, ever gonna be uh, some oh, successful so day laborer. If you're going to have a successful career, it's going to be, you know, a social career or, or, or an intellectual career or a white collar yeah. career. The kind of thing that wait until you're 45 is not going to get in the way of. You can be a very, very, very successful uh, after age 45. So there you go. There's a war on women. They talk about it all the time. It's not from the guys like me. It's certainly not from the patriarchy. We love women in the patriarchy. We want lots of them. Uh, but uh, it's, it's from the, your supposed friends out there, the feminist, you know, the, the modernist. I don't even like the term feminist anymore because their ideology has been so in, uh, absorbed into the culture. People will tell you, oh, I'm not feminism. I hate, I'm, I hate feminism when, when they're, they're seeped in it and, and they are the definition of it in their own lives. So and there's people listening right now who, who are shaking their fist in the air going, yeah, I preach it, brother. We're down with the feminist. And, and you're probably the biggest stealth feminist of them all. But there it is. Amelia Earhart was Tokyo Rose. Another little piece of proof came out. And another, another piece of, of the overwhelming evidence that, that, that modernity, the modern world, the postmodern world, and feminism is, is not just failing women, but is actively grinding them down. The same way it is men. You know, I mean, it's not any better for women than it is men. The big toe guys, oh God, I, didn't, I stepped in that trap. The MGTOW guys talk about how this is a woman's world and it's designed to grind down men at the expense of women. That's not true. It's designed to, to, to grind down men and women. Women are just the, the tool they're using to do it. But it's just as hard as on the women as it is on the men, maybe even more so, because the women are being told they should be happy and this is all for your benefit and they're still unfulfilled and, uh, and, and unhappy. And the men at least know that we're the target, you know, and, and we can kind of struggle against it and fight back and, and have some context to put it in. And women can't figure out why they're so stinking unhappy and unhealthy and, and having to be drugged and, and uh, put in therapy and all this stuff. So I'm going to shut up now. I'd go on forever on this topic if I could. We've got a storm coming in, we think, and it looks like it's going to be a good one. But uh, we appreciate you, man. Thank you.